right so you, still you can if any of you need to join the code is available on the top right hand corner right so you just go for join pd.com and then uh, with the code right now uh, last monday we talked about uh, a brief introduction of basics about the astronomy so what we have done up to the last week is that we have uh, gone through different kind of units especially about we talked about the light years that which is uh, one of the main uh, type of units that we are using in astronomy and uh, using that unit we talk different things how to measure the distances and why we are using light years those kind of things and apart from that so i have um, walked you through uh, a small tour for the universe which started from our own earth and then uh, by looking at you know different uh, scales we have gone up to first we talked about our own earth and then the moon and then the sun in the solar system and then our own milky way and other nearby galaxies and then about galaxy groups and then clusters and super clusters right so in that way we talk uh, about different scales that we can uh, look at the universe right now so th that is just for you to give a uh, give an overall idea what we will be talking inside this particular course right now i am moving to chapter two today which is about observing the sky the birth of astronomy now you can see that these two topics are kind of uh, related to each other so what this means is when uh, like thousands of years ago so people were observing the night sky right even more than what we are doing from our naked eye today and uh, so so this is where uh, uh, the astronomy began at that time right so once you start observing the sky so you are going to study different you know you you just wonder why these objects are there and what kind of patterns that you can see in the sky like that you start to ask a uh, lot of questions right and this is where the astronomy uh, started right so to answer these questions the the astronomy came as a different discipline so that's what has happened now in this uh, course uh, we will learn about uh, uh, how we can uh, observe the sky but in a little bit of modern way right so not just about uh, go outside and looking at uh, different objects that you can see of course uh, you should you should actually definitely do that as well but in this particular chapter what we are trying to learn is uh, how we can systematically look at the sky using you know coordinates systems and latitudes and longitudes and how you can locate objects and how these objects are moving on the sky those kind of things right now to start with if you go outside and look at the sky usually you should see uh, an image like this now this is the night sky how the night sky looks like for atacama desert in chile which is uh, again in the southern hemisphere now we are in the northern hemisphere but this particular image is taken uh, has taken in uh, from the southern hemisphere right now what you can see here is uh, right here you can see the the band from the milky way and then towards the left hand side you should see these small two uh, objects so which are large magellanic cloud and the small magellanic clouds which are two other galaxies that you that are visible from the southern hemisphere right 
right now uh, to start with uh, basically in, within this chapter i would like to uh, cover uh, these learning goals so which means uh, by the end of this chapter if you know how to do any of these things that basically means that you have the required knowledge from the chapter right so that means you should be able to define the features main features of the celestial sphere and then explain different systems that astronomers use to describe the sky and describe how motions of the stars sun moon planets appear to us on the earth and understand the modern meaning of the term constellation so we'll talk about the constellation as well and then we will go into talk about a little bit of history of astronomy uh, basically about the copernican model and then uh, what galileo has discovered and then uh, explain how greek astronomers were able to deduce the earth's spherical uh, that the earth is spherical and then calculate the size of the earth those kind of things right now uh, to start with right now the first thing is uh, uh, about the geocentric universe now this is somewhat related to the history of astronomy but uh, so i am just taking it uh, here as the first point when you look at look around you uh, our senses normally suggest us to uh, consider that earth is at the center of the universe right so this is how normally we feel because i mean that's how we 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 are used to think right so we always think that we are at the center uh, also that same thing will apply here so we think normally think that earth may be at the center uh, of the universe right now this kind of universe is normally called as a geocentric universe which means earth is at the center and this is what actually everyone believed until 15th and 16th centuries right however now we know that the geocentric view of the view uh, happens to be wrong that is not the correct way to think about uh, our universe right now let's see uh, how our sky looks like right now the first thing that we are going to learn is the celestial sphere now if you go outside on a clear night the sky uh, looks like a hollow dome right so that means it will be looks it looks like a hemispherical dome if you go outside and if you can see the complete sky what you normally see is a hemisphere right so this is what we call as the dome right and uh, in this dome if you go outside and look directly above your head that particular point has a specific name in astronomy and this uh, name is zenith so the point directly above your head is called as the zenith right now when you go and look at where are the the dome meets the earth so that means uh, if you once you are in this uh, dome and you are on the earth so there is a point where this dome and the earth meets right so that is directly uh, parallel to the earth surface right so that particular uh, uh, point is called the horizon it's actually not the horizon everywhere that you see when this dome meets the earth that is called the horizon right now Uh, actually the problem is in practically for most of the places that we live the horizon is at least uh, partially hidden right uh, so most of these uh, domes are actually partially hidden if you just go outside and look at now if you are inside the building there are a lot of other buildings that are covered around you right most of the time what we can see is just a sky uh, that is a high uh, that is above you 
and maybe around you, but you cannot see more. Most of the time, you cannot see your horizon actually because it is covered from even from maybe from mountains and maybe from buildings like that. Right. So everything I have explained up to now, uh, nicely uh, depicted in this particular diagram. So think that uh, you are the one right here at the middle, and then. The point directly above you is called as the zenith. And the point, so if you if this is the dome, the point that uh, the horizon and the point that uh, the uh, the earth meets, meets the dome is called as the horizon, right? The horizon is basically around you. So it is not actually one point. So you can Look at the horizon in each and every direction, right? Right. And uh, now, uh, something that is uh, interesting to know that you will see that all the stars rising on the eastern horizon and setting on the western horizon. Now, you know that sun is one of our stars, and you know that the sun rises from the east and the set from the west. The same will apply for all the other stars. Right? If you go outside and look for two or three hours, you can easily realize that all these stars rise from one side and they will sit from the other side. Right? And so, so basically what happens is they rise from the east side and they will sit from the west side. Right? Uh, So what people thought about this in the ancient time is that they observed that the sky is really a part of this great sphere that is turning around you. So this, they thought that there is a large sphere and the sky is fixed for that and this sphere is rotating and because of that all these stars are rotating on the sky. Right? So so what will happen is when you think about it in this way, you will get different stars into view as it turns, right? When, when the sphere turns, the sky turns, and you will get different stars to your view at different times. So that's how people thought about this motion in the ancient times. And uh, so this, uh, uh, this whole uh, sphere that they see, so they uh, consider this as a celestial sphere, right? So celestial sphere is this one right here that they call previously. Now, uh, so you can see that this is the earth right at the middle from the, mostly from the blue, blue color. And around the earth, there is another sphere, right? So that sphere is what we call as the celestial sphere, right? Now, there are a few important points that you can notice here. Uh, so this uh, line that is drawn from south to north on the, the earth is called as the, the axis of the earth. And uh, the point on the celestial sphere directly above the north point is called as the north celestial pole. And then here you have the south pole in the downside of this sphere. So the point directly below that point on the celestial sphere is called as the uh, south celestial pole. Right? So these are very specific points in this uh, particular system. Right? Now, when you look at this uh, North Celestial Pole, this particular uh, arrow that you can see here is the, uh, the direction or that shows the apparent motion of the celestial objects on the sky around this pole. Right? And basically, for example, if you think about a star right here, this is how star is rotating around the North Celestial Pole. Right. Now today we know that these celestial objects are not really on a dome, but 
greatly varying distances from us in the space. Now, this is one of the things that we, uh, we understood later that it is not true to believe that all these stars are attached to this dome, right? Which is basically at the same distance from us, right? Like, uh, like a radius of R and there is a dome that if you think about it in that way, all these stars are from the same distance from us, right? Now, now we know that this is not true. All these stars and objects that we observe on the sky, actually they are in varying distances, not each and every star is at the same distance, right? So this uh, brings us to think that our previous idea is not, the, not a correct one, right? However, it is uh, sometimes still convenient to talk about the celestial dome or sphere to keep track of these objects, right? So if we know that this is, it is true that all these stars and objects are not on the same distance from us, but still it is helpful to think about this, uh, uh, the dome or the sphere concept, because it will make things easy to keep uh, these objects trackable or you can locate objects very easily when you think about it right so it's basically like a three uh, the two-dimensional view of the three-dimensional universe so that's what what's what happens here now uh, what we know now is uh, our planet is rotating right not uh, the celestial sphere right so just uh, give me a minute, there is a like, call coming from you. Just be here with me, right? Right, so I'm back here, sorry about that. And uh, so what we have been talking about this uh, is this motion of these stars on the sky. And uh, so, uh, so let me uh, get you to another aspect. Now, another thing that we can see on this, uh, on the sky is this grouping of stars. For example, if you take, uh, this constellation called Big Dipper, right? So they have the same shape during the course of night. So which means when you look at a set of stars that are placed in an order, so that order will uh, preserve, right, throughout the night. For example, if you take, let's say you take the constellation Orion, so there are certain, there is a certain shape for the constellation. And once you go through the whole night, uh, this uh, shape of this constellation will preserve right throughout the night. So that's what will happen. So which means those stars are not changing from one to the other. So that's why I have mentioned here that uh, as the celestial sphere rotate, the objects on it maintain their positions with respect to one another, right? So these the respective positions will not change. Right. Now, there are uh, other points that, that is important for us to uh, know here when I mean, we talk about this celestial sphere. So those are actually celestial poles and celestial equator, right? So I think I have shown you what are celestial poles and what are uh, celestial equator. So let me go back to this particular diagram right here. So the 
the projection of Earth's equator to the celestial sphere, which is this blue line, is what we call as the celestial equator. And the two other points, the projection of the North Pole of Earth to the celestial sphere is the North Celestial Pole. And similarly, you have the South Celestial Pole uh, in the south, south direction, right? So those are the points that we talk here. So the North Celestial Pole, South Celestial Pole, and, uh, and then extension of Earth's equator onto the celestial sphere is called celestial equator, right? So those are uh, the three things that you have to remember. So remember that what we are trying to learn here is the uh, relative positions or points that we should know uh, to locate objects and to explain somebody about the motion of these objects on the sky, right? Uh, and you can see that one important point here, the apparent motion of the celestial sphere depends on your latitude. So which means uh, how, the the, how the motion looks like on the celestial sphere will depend on where you are on the Earth. Right. For example, we are around like in a five degrees latitude from north. And if you take a country like let's say USA, they are around like 40 degrees latitude above the equator, right? Basically it's 40 degrees latitude. So which means they are a little bit higher. Now, uh, the motion of the celestial sphere and all these uh, objects will be different from them for them than us. Right. So that is one important thing that we have to understand. And we will, you will see how it works uh, in these coming slides. Now here is a, a real image that is taking, taken uh, of the South Pole. Right. So I have mentioned, uh, the caption mentioned here, this long exposure photo shows trails left by stars as a result of the apparent rotation of the celestial sphere around the south celestial pole. Now this image is taken uh, from the, the south celestial pole. These, uh, these are called actually star trails. So what happens is if you uh, put on a camera for a very long exposure time, they will catch these trails, which means the movements of the stars. So what you can see very nicely here, all the stars are moving in a circular pattern around uh, the South Celestial Pole. Right? So which is a nice uh, example of how stars are moving on the celestial poles. Right. Now let's see how the sky was. So I have mentioned that uh, the motion of the objects and are uh, the motion of the objects on the celestial sphere will be different for different latitudes, right? Now let's see how it works. Now, if you take a, a position on the north or south pole of the Earth, let's see how these stars looks like. How the motion of the stars looks like for a person who is located on the celestial pole. Or on the on on the either on the north celestial pole or south celestial pole, right? So this is something that you cannot. I mean, it is very rare that somebody could go into actually go into the south or north celestial pole and observe this. Of course, there are observing points and telescopes located on these poles, which uh, if you get the chance for one day to go there, you will uh, see this uh, thing uh, actually, but. What happens is in these poles, if you think about the during the course of a night, so which means from, uh, let's say from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Uh, uh, is there someone is, is uh, someone who you need to ask something for? Right. So you are muted, right. Right. Now, uh, if you look at, as I was talking about the North and South Celestial Poles, uh, now if you look at the motion of the stars uh, during the course of a night, 
it would be all circling around the celestial pole, right? So you will never see a star rising or set. So this is something interesting that you cannot observe from here from Sri Lanka, right? So if you go outside, your normal experience will be all the stars, they used to rise from one end and they will set from the west side. Right? This is what happened. But what you would see in, uh, in North or South Celestial Pole is uh, something completely different. Right? So all the stars, so they will be circling around. Right? So that's what you have seen in this particular image. So they are just circling around on the North and South Celestial Pole. They will never rise or set. Right? This is something very interesting. Now, uh, the other thing that you can notice from the north, let's say from the north celestial pole is only half of the sky north of the celestial equator is visible. So that's obvious now when you are in the, the north celestial pole, you will see the half of the door or the half of the sphere, right? So which means you will only see uh, the part uh, north of the celestial equator. Right, and uh, uh, the same thing will happen for an observer in the South Pole. They would see only the southern half of the sky. Now, if you are on the North Pole, you will only see the northern half of the sky. If you are the, on the southern pole, you will only see the southern half of the sky. Right. So that's how it works. Now, maybe if you are in between, then you can see like a little bit of south side of the sky. Right. So if you are located on a location like Sri Lanka, you can see the, the in terms of a percentage, you will see mostly the northern part, but you can see some of the southern part of the sky as well because we are kind of close, uh, pretty close to the equator. Right, so now let's see. So that's what happens when you are on the, the poles. Uh, now let's see what happens if you are on uh, Earth's equator, right? So let me, that is something pretty close to what we are experiencing, not exactly the same thing because we are not exactly on the equator. We are a little bit above, but it's something very close to us. So what you will see is, you will see the celestial equator pass above your head. So think about you are on the equator and sitting on the equator, so directly above your head, you will have the celestial equator, right? Uh, that means on the steady point. And the celestial poles are at north and south points on your horizon. So which means if you think about you are on the equator, north celestial pole and the south celestial pole will be on your horizon, right? So that is something you have to imagine and think about this particular situation now. Uh, the other thing is all the stars will rise straight up from the east side and they will set down from the west side. Now this is what you will observe now since we are very close to the equator this is exactly what not exactly but this is some, somewhat similar to what we are observing as well right so they all will rise from the east and will set from the west side right. Now during the 24 hour period all the stars are above the horizon for half of the time exactly, like roughly for 12 hours. So that's what happened. However, when you uh, look at a particular star, sometimes uh, you won't be able to see that that particular star is on the sky for all 12 hours. That's because that particular star may have risen up a little bit earlier. And when you look at the sky, it is already up directly above your head, maybe around 7 p.m., let's say then it has only a little time to pass to go below the horizon. So in the night time, you won't see that all, to, all 12 hours, right? So that normally happens, but it will be up above the horizon for 12 hours, even though we cannot observe it for some time because of the sunlight. Right, so we have basically talked about how the sky looks like in North Pole and South Pole and on the equator, right? Now let's look at a general case because those are specific points, right? 
but if you when you think about a, a general case like let's say uh, there is an observer at a latitude of uh, in united states for example so that is kind of a reasonable uh, place because they are in kind of mid latitudes now i think about that uh, in this particular situation your north celestial pole is neither overhead nor on the horizon but in between right so this is what happens so, so if you are in this halfway above the equator around 40 degree let's say around 40 degree latitude then actually your uh, north celestial pole is uh, it is not above your head or it is also not on the horizon but it should be in between right i can i, I hope i assume that you can understand this and uh, so what will normally happen is it is above the northern horizon at an angular height or latitude equal to the observer's latitude now this is very important right you can even if you draw a diagram you can understand this but the idea is let's say if you are in the 40 degrees latitude 40 degrees latitude then your northern horizon uh, should be at an angular height or a latitude equal to 40 degrees right if i have given an example here uh, if your latitude is 30 degrees north uh, then the celestial pole is 30 degrees above the northern horizon right so that's how you can understand it normally your location of the celestial uh, pole and the latitude will be the same right now the other things that you can now based on that fact you can probably think about this for an observer that is 38 degrees north latitude the south celestial pole is below 38 degrees uh, below the southern horizon right so which means you cannot see the south celestial pole right and uh, for this observer, stars within 38 degrees of North Pole can never set. Now, this is something very, uh, very important and also very interesting. Uh, if you go for these higher latitudes, let's say you go to a country like USA and go outside and spend the whole night, right, looking at stars and see how they rise and set. When you try to observe these stars, you will clearly see that there will be a set of stars uh, close to the north, uh, north Celestial Pole and around North Celestial Pole that these stars actually, instead of rising and setting, this particular set of stars just goes around the North Pole, right? North Celestial Pole. And this particular region where these stars never, basically what happens is these stars never rise so set, right? So they just go around uh, this uh, North Pole, right? And this particular zone where this, all the stars goes around without rising or set is called as the circumpolar zone or circumpolar window. So that's a specific name that you have to remember not only the name you need to understand what that means right uh, now if i give you an example uh, if you are living in a uh, uh, living in a country like united states one reason just to let you know there is no specific reason to take united states right so the, the only reason is everyone knows about that it is in mid latitudes which is an ideal position to talk about the general case right because if we take sri lanka we are we are too close to the equator so we will experience mostly what observers uh, experience close to equator right now if you go to these uh, latitudes like united states there are certain uh, constellations uh, big deeper little deeper and cassiopeia so these are nice examples of group of stars in in this north circumpolar zone so which means all these uh, group of stars they never rise so set right so they just go around 
inside this uh, so they are basically inside this uh, compoler zone right now what happens is when you go to move towards more northern uh, towards the north pole your latitude gets higher your circumpolar zone actually gets bigger right when you go into the north pole almost all the stars will go around you without rise and setting but when you go a little bit down then uh, this uh, size of the circumpolar zone will become smaller right and of course if you come into the equator where the latitude is zero you will not have a circumpolar zone right but for us what has happened was we are just above the horizon we actually have a circumpolar zone but it's a very small right so this is why we don't experience it that much right but there is a circumpolar zone right so everything that i have mentioned uh, so everything that we have talked up now i have given you a question here so i hope uh, this question the answers for this question may be uh, appeared on your screen so you can answer the questions right so this is a uh, which one of the following is true for an observer uh, at a latitude of 45 degrees north so what would be the answer so i'm waiting for responses so try to give your response for this particular uh, question so i guess you will have like three answers to answer basically the things that we have talked up to now you can give the answer right so this is just to make sure that you have understood what i am talking here and i have given the three images as well here so that you can understand it the three three uh, uh, special scenarios So let me give you a minute. Let me let's say two minutes until nine forty-three for you to answer. Right. What I can see is only seventeen of you have logged into this system. So make sure that you logged in and give you answers. Right. So otherwise, I don't know whether you are learning or not, or maybe you don't understand it. I can only see like three, four responses here. So let me wait for another minute. I mean, if you learn it in this way, then you don't have to, you know, go back and, you know, just make, remember each and everything that you have done, like, in the last moment of the exam because here what you have learned you are applying it at the same in the same at the same time right
Right, I guess uh, time is over now. So let me show the responses. So here are the three answers I can, I have given you. Uh, you can observe the stars in the Southern. So the, uh, the question is, uh, this particular observer is on the, where was he? The question is, which one of the following is true for an observer at a latitude of 45 degrees north? Now, let me explain you it from these three diagrams. Now, this diagram, diagram C, is the more appropriate diagram to discuss about this particular problem because you can see that. Uh, uh, let me see. There is a person right here. He is around like you know. Here, here is the Earth's axis. He is around 45, deg 45 degrees, right, uh, in latitude. So this is a kind of an example for that. It not exactly 45, but you can think of the situation. So if you are right here at 45 degrees, your horizon is actually this. Uh, Line here, which is the this brown circle, and you can clearly see that if you understand it from the image, that the first answer he can observe the stars in the south pole, right? Can he do that because he is now in the 45 degrees north latitude, right? So the south pole should be below his horizon because the only Way that you can uh, see the South Pole is if you are on the celestial equator, like this situation right here. You can you are directly on the celestial equator, which means in the two horizons you will have the South Celestial Pole and North Celestial Pole, right? But here the problem is you are on more towards the north north side when you are in the north latitudes. So there is no way that you can see the South Pole from north latitudes, right? Because the south pole will be below the horizon so that means you can rule out this first answer right so the, those who have picked it can make sure that you understand why it is wrong right and then the second answer is he can observe the stars in the north pole right now how about that right so all the stars because he is in northern latitudes they are should his uh, north pole should be similar to his latitude. So that means if he is 45 degrees north, his north pole should be 45 degrees above the horizon. So what that means is he should be able to see the north pole, right? Because the north pole is 45 degrees above the horizon. So that's what I have mentioned here. Uh, so when you are in 38 degrees north latitude, your celestial pole is 38 degrees above the horizon, right? Now here he can see, it is very clear that he, he cannot see the south celestial pole, but north celestial pole will be 45 degrees above the horizon. So if something above the horizon, he, he should be able to observe it, right? So that is the basic idea. So make sure that you understand it, So which means, he can observe the stars in the North Pole, right? So that should be a correct answer. Now let's see the third one. He will observe that the star uh, will rise from west and set from east. And I cannot understand why, maybe you misunderstood this uh, wording right here. So what I have mentioned is the star will rise from west and set from east, right? So think about our sun. Any None of the stars cannot rise from west and set from the east, right? So it has to be rise from east side and set from west side, right? So that has to happen if the star is not inside the circumpolar zone. That's what has happened. Maybe you have misunderstood these two words, right? So I have... Uh, purposely made it switched uh, to make you uh, 
that you you pay the attention for the correct answer, right? So this should be the correct answer here, B. Only two of you got it correct. And that may be you because you have wrongly read this particular answer, but something important is you have to ask. And still, you have to understand that this answer is correct, right? You can observe the stars in the North Pole. Right? So, I hope you understood that particular question, right? So, make sure that you get that basic understanding. Right. I think this one I uh, don't need to explain you now. I already explained about stars. So star circles at different latitudes and uh, right now let's look at uh, another thing that how these uh, how our sun and earth move throughout uh, the year right so you can see the sun is right here now this probably will be interesting for you and this is how your horoscope is made by the way right and you will understand that as well now your sun is right here and you can see the earth is right here and uh, you know that earth revolves around the sun and we sit on uh, sit on the earth and when sun is moving around the sky uh, there is a specific name uh, for that path, the circle in the sky that sun appears to make around us in the course of a year is called the ecliptic. So that name is important, right? For you to understand, because whenever you are when and whenever you are listening to some someone when they say that uh, the, the name ecliptic, so that means uh, path of the sun that appears to make around us, right? That is called basically the path of the sun of this sun on the sky, right? So let's keep it in that way to make it simpler. So what has happened is this blue uh, <coughs> circle right here represents that right path of the sun on the sky. Now what has happened is uh, this circle goes to a set of constellations, right? You can see that when you look at this blue circle, it depends on the, the orientation between sun and earth. So it goes through different constellations. In the background, there are different constellations. For example, when sun and earth is on this particular uh, arrangement on August, then the constellation in the background is Cancer, right? And then if, if the when the earth goes into this setup, or this orientation with the sun, uh, then you have the constellation Taurus in the background. So that's how you understand about it. And what has happened is actually uh, the ancients thought that this constellation which the sun visited must be special and incorporate them into their system of astrology. Now this is uh, how you can understand astrology. Remember that we, we don't uh, learn about the astrology, but this is the connection, right? So these uh, constellations that it goes through at different particular uh, times in the year uh, is what uh, the astrologers used to make these uh, horoscopes, right? Right. Now, the other thing is in you, something that you need to know is uh, the celestial tilt. So, what that means is uh, our celestial equator uh, our celestial equator is tilted by 23.5 degrees to the ecliptic, right? So that means the path of the sun. And if, if you look at, uh, this is the path of the sun, this uh, uh, brown circle that you see here, brown ellipse is the path of the sun. 
and this dashed line is the celestial equator. And because uh, our Earth's axis is tilted by 23.5 degrees, you can see that uh, our celestial equator is also tilted accordingly. And the path of the sun, which is the ecliptic, is in this uh, depicted from this brown ellipse. So, which means there is an ang difference in the angle, right? So, that difference is around 23.5 degrees, which is equal to the tilt of the earth, right? Now, this is uh, as a result of this tilt uh, for the North American and European countries, they see the sun in the north of celestial equator and high in. Uh, uh, the sky in June, right? And South Celestial Equator, low in the sky uh, in December, right? I guess you can read about it here. So that is a, a consequence of this, uh, the tilt of the Earth's axis. Right? And we will uh, later understand that or see that this tilt also lead to the different seasons that we have. Right. right. So here is the uh, the set of constellations I have put again here. What kind? What constellation is in the background of this uh, ecliptic or the path of the sun in different times of the years? So in January, February, it is uh, this particular constellation, and then February, March, Aquarius, and then like that, it goes down. The list goes on. Right for these constellations. Right. Uh, just to finish our lecture for today's uh, today, let me have you this question. So shall we answer for this one? Just this is just a guess. Right? There is nothing that you can get from what I have taught today. Right. So this is just for the curiosity. If there are no clouds in the sky, and if you can see this whole hemisphere. When you go outside, so that means a flat plane uh, with nothing to obstruct your view. Let's say that it is very dark, that there are no light here. How many stars we could see from our unaided eye? So, without having a binocular or telescope, how many stars we should be able to see up in the sky? It's just you from your naked eye. So, this is completely a guest answer, right? So, I, there may be, there are like no exact answers for this, but I would like you to respond to this question and see what do you think. Right? Then we will go into the, the next question. Okay. So please answer for this one. So I'll give you like a few minutes and then we will actually uh, finish the lecture for today after that. Once you give the answers, the quicker you give the answers, we will finish it quickly. Right, uh, only three of you have actually responded. So let me just uh, keep the question open for you for the next day as well so that you can uh, just think about and think about answering for that. So just come up with an answer on the next day, right? So I will open this question on the first day of your class. What I can see is we have different answers like 1,000, 5,000, 10,000, 5,000, 2,500, 0, like that. Answer so I 
right so anyway keep let's keep the answer open for the others just to think about it i can see that some of you i mean there are different numbers which are very you know, very very fair numbers that you you have thought right so let me finish for today as we are running out of time i can see that uh, i have Right, so if not, uh, let me, if you do not have any questions, uh, let me stop for now. And uh, so we will start again uh, from next Monday, right? Right, thank you for your participation and good night to everyone.